When you need mealtime inspiration, it's worth shopping Kroger, for thousands of appetizing ingredients that inspire countless mouth-watering meals. And no matter what tasty choice you make, you'll enjoy our everyday low prices, plus extra ways to save, like digital coupons worth over $600 each week, and up to $1 off per gallon at the pump with points. So you can get big flavors and big savings. Kroger, fresh for everyone. Fuel restrictions apply. You will never find a more wretched hive of scum and villainy. We must be cautious. Hello, fellow gamers, and welcome to the Video Gamers Podcast. It's a glorious day for the Empire as we're celebrating a milestone for the podcast as we have been hijacked by mythic supporter oh. Disratory to play a game that they chose for us to play. On today's episode, we're revealing the game, the disparity between the critic reviews and the user reviews, and our initial thoughts as we head in. But first, some introductions are in order. I am your host, Josh, and joining me, he's made the Kessel Run, but it took him 18 parsecs. He always wants you to tell him the odds, and he's as handsome as a bantha, it's Ryan. Wait a second. I don't think that's how those were supposed to go. What? 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 Do you, no, man. That was all compliments. Oh, what, are you, what are you talking uh -huh, about, Ryan? Uh huh. I could do. A, I could do it faster than eighteen. Although I will say, a parsec is actually not a unit of time. It's a unit of measure. Yeah, I know. And how many parsecs did uh, Han Solo do the Kessel Run in? Was it fourteen? No, you failed, I man. Failed. Shh, boy, listen. Okay, I, I was a lot of. I wasn't what alive when these movies came out, unlike somebody. <laughs> oh, uh, man, and you call yourself a Star Wars fan. Wait, Ryan, there's a lot of Star Wars references going on in there, this intro. There is. I wonder why. Hmm, I wonder why that could be. <laughs> uh, listen, we have a awesome jam-packed episode uh, for everybody that's out there, but we want to start this episode off because we did mention that this episode is being brought to you by an awesome fantastic supporter of the show. His name is Disratory. He's an awesome person. I have played many a game with Disratory. I know he is just very active in our Discord server as well. Um, but, you know, Disratory has been supporting the show for a long time. Uh, he's been a legendary supporter for a while now. And you and I, Ryan, we kind of went, dude, at we some do point, something. Yeah, we got to do it something. It gets better. It gets better than legendary, right? Like that used to be the highest yeah. thing, the, the highest honor, right? There has to be more. But there has to be more. And so we went, what's better than legendary? And Ryan, what's better than legendary? Mythic! Mythic tier! <laughs> <laughs> That's right. So we had to create a tier uh, for Dissertory and maybe another supporter that people will hear about in the future as well. But this episode is a celebration of that, and it is also to announce the game that Dissertory picked for you and I to play. So this is also a Hijack a Host episode because we're getting forced into playing a game, Ryan. We, are. we don't have a choice. Dissertory picked it, whether we like it or not. Man, we're playing this game. That's the deal. We are. Yeah. We are. And if and if you want to hop in and if you want to give us some support, you like what we do, you enjoy um, kind of the content we put out, we have a bunch of different options. Um, go to MultiplayerSquad.com. You can uh, support us starting as low as five bucks a month. You get early access to episodes, ad-free, a bunch of cool perks. Um, again, starts as low as five bucks a month. And I don't know about you, but I feel like we should do something a little extra. Dude, let's give one away. Like, like just give a game away? Yeah, let's just. If you're on our Discord, you you're you're part of the show. You know, you're you're in there. We we have a ton of people on our Discord. It's an awesome, awesome um, community. Everybody that's in there is also kind, welcoming, um, very generous uh, with information. They all talk to each other. They all discuss all the games they love. How about anybody on the Discord? If you're in there, you're eligible. And we will give away the game that we're going to play for this uh, for this deep dive. Ooh, I love it. What do it. you think? 
Yeah? I love it. All right, yeah, let's, let's do, it. do it, man. Heck yeah. Dude, people, I, everybody's been awesome. They have been supporting the show for a long time. We have always told people that it doesn't have to be like monetary support. Yeah. Telling a friend about the show is huge. You know, when somebody asks for recommendation, just being like, hey, have you checked out the Video Gamers podcast, man? Like, give them a shot. Tagging us on social media, just anything to help spread the word is very, very beneficial to us in a way that people can help uh, that maybe don't have the funds or, you know, can't support the show over on multiplayer squad.com. For sure. I love it. Yeah. All right. We're doing it. All right. And so yeah. we'll, we'll announce that uh, when we come back to do the deep dive yes. for this so game in two, two weeks, weeks, right? Yeah. Two weeks. We'll announce somebody from the discord that joins up. So you're still eligible. You, when this episode drops, you can go hop in the links in the description. Um, join the community again. Like I said, everybody that gets in, Hey, I'm this person. Everybody opens, you know, their arms and welcomes them. What's your favorite game? What do you like to do? What do you like to play? Um, so it's really cool. Hop on in and somebody's going to get a game on us. I, I love, love it. it. Heck yeah. All right. <laughs> you know, one other way that people can support the show is to leave a review. Um, that, you know, people are looking around. Obviously, reviews are very important for people that might be on the lookout for a podcast. And, you know, if you're on Spotify, you can rate us five stars. If you're on Apple, you can leave us a written review. And we generally read those written reviews on this show. Like this one that comes in from our good friend Dale. And Ryan, <laughs> I think this review yeah. might be the most epic review that we have ever gotten. I think so. And I think it's going to need us both. I think it's going to need us both on this one, man. So uh, let's... Uh, Let's get let's get ready for this one. The ready? title of this review is You Down with VGP? Yeah, you know me. Oh yeah. All right. <clears throat> We're going to act this out. Is everybody <clears throat> ready? ready? All, All right. right, everybody get ready for this one. Okay. Walks up to the Apple store, pulls down ski mask and pulls out realistic looking prop pistol. Kicks in already unlocked completely openable door. Break yourself, fool. This is a pickup. Oh my god. Wait. Don't you mean a stick up? No, I want you to pick up that iPhone and leave this review. Don't you have an iPhone? Lady, do you think I'd be in this spot if I did? The VGP are making me do this. Now type. If you think you'd be interested in Kratos with Seth Rogen's voice and a UFC fighter who cries over Diablo 2 hardcore runs, talking video games, then you're in the right place. Seriously, these guys are awesome. They keep me engaged through every deep dive twig episode and bonus round. I love the fact that they are dads who still game. The myth is busted. I absolutely love the Video Gamers podcast, Discord community, and the fact that Josh and Ryan are very much engaged with their listeners. I even enjoy when Paul pops in. We miss you, man. The best pranks episode is my undisputed favorite, and I can't wait to hear more. I cannot recommend this podcast enough. These guys get a five-star wanted level because I will relentlessly pursue these gamers. Thanks, fellas. Okay, send it. You sure you want to do this? Cock's fake gun. Lady, this is the VGP we're talking about. Do you think they're playing games? Blinks and realizes how that sounds. Knocks over vase full of flowers as a distraction and runs out the door. The end. <laughs> I mean, if that isn't the what a review review what I've review. ever seen. <laughs> when nobody's going to hear is how I messed it up. Uh no, <laughs> messed up what? Right? I, I, I don't know. I don't anything. know what anyone's that talking about. That didn't take us more than one take. I, I don't, to one do one take. We'll do it live. <laughs> we'll do it live. <laughs> oh man! All right, you know what? Let's let's get into this episode, yes. Ryan. Enough <laughs> shenanigans this early on. Okay. <laughs> So in these episodes, these hijack a host episodes, we do them between you and I as a force a friend episode. They've been very popular. They're a lot of fun. Yes. We get to play games that normally we would never play. Um, but normally we kind of tease the reveal of the game and the host that was picked. And we, we like to kind of build up to that sometimes. But honestly, in this case, there's not a whole lot of surprise since we're both going to be playing the game. So I think it would be cool to just kind of dive into it right off the bat. So let's just get to it, Ryan. Why don't you tell the people what game Dissertory picked and is forcing you and I to play? 
So this is uh, probably one of the best things I've ever been forced, you know, to do, if you will. Uh, <laughs> this is something that we had talked a ton about on the pod. Um, we were very excited leading up to the release. It's just kind of one of those things where a lot of games came out in August and September. Um, yeah. And now we're just starting into October. We're kind of catching up to that backlog. And this worked out quite beautifully actually you know and, and it was quite a kind of great setup on how this happened but we are you know forced quote unquote to play star wars outlaws <laughs> Oh yeah. boy, we have covered this game a lot a on ton. this show. Yeah. We have gotten hyped for it. We have gotten a little less hyped for it. Then we got hyped for it all over again. Yeah. <laughs> um, we'll get to that in a little bit. But I mean, Star Wars Outlaws, Star Wars in general, I am a huge fan of Star Wars, dude. I mean, I, I love it. I know there's people that don't like some of the newer, like The Force Awakens and stuff like that, some of the newer movies and stuff like that. But I'll be honest, it is, I just find Star Wars to be supremely entertaining. I love the characters. I love the world and all that. So I am a very much a Star Wars fan. Um, I literally on my wall uh, right next to me, I have a five painting diet, like a uh, giant thing of a death star oh so i have that to me i know the exact exact same thing yeah (laughs) i know exactly so are you a star wars fan as well i i am um apparently not the biggest because i don't remember the kessel run i know it's it's however many parsecs but it's whatever 12 yeah 12 that's what it is uh but anyways i am i've always always loved star wars i did i was a child during kind of the prequels when they came up so Big fan of like speaking video games. Uh, the with episode one, the pod racing game on sixty four. Oh, pod racer yeah, was legit. Dude, dude. Such a good game. Oh, I loved man. that game so much. And when you would you know crash and then you just spin off with one like engine and then just crash yeah. and blow up. And so um, yeah, I have I have a quite a fond relationship with Star Wars. I know some of the newer stuff and and uh, the newer shows uh, specifically have not always been the best and received the best, but. Between that, the different spinoffs, the, um, you know, and I, and I feel like this is kind of getting into with, uh, you know, dealing like with Warhammer where there's so much more lore that we don't even know about. And we consider ourselves big time fans, but there's real fans, you know, that, that know everything. But I, I remember all the way going back, my, my earliest memories with Star Wars was, um, I think it was, uh, Return of the Jedi with the Ewoks and I was eating pizza at a friend's house on like a weekend night when I was like eight, eight years old or something, nine years old, something like that real young. And, and that's the first time I remember it. And I've just, I've loved everything star Wars since it's just always been one of those things that you can always turn it on. You can always play a game, you know, anything having to do with it. It's just, it gives those warm, fuzzy feelings. Yeah. All right, Ryan, we have to settle something right here and now. Okay. Empire or rebellion. Oh, Empire. Empire, yeah! yeah. Dude, my man. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, dude, that's, <laughs> no that's not even a question. Dude, yeah. What people couldn't see is Ryan's face just <laughs> looking at me like I was crazy for even asking the that's question. Stupidest so, question ever. But this uh, is this is why we get along so well. It's Ryan. one of those ones that has to be asked. But dude, yeah. I would I would uh bleed out that kyber crystal in a heartbeat. Yeah. Oh, give absolutely. That, give me that red saber. Right. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so I did we touched on this a, a few minutes ago. This game from the time it was announced and we saw the trailer for it being star Wars fans. I know that we both got very hyped for this game. Um, and then as we got closer to release, we got some gameplay trailers. We got some, you know, uh, previews, first looks and things like that. And part of that, we went, Oh man, this game doesn't look as good as I thought it was going to look. And then we saw a trailer and it looked phenomenal. And we went, oh, dude, this might be like a game of the year contender, man. Yeah. yeah, That trailer was great. And then we'd get another preview and then we'd kind of look and we'd be like, oh man, that kind of looks a little janky or something, man. Like, I don't know. Like maybe this isn't as good as I thought it was going to be. I remember having this exact same feeling with Hogwarts Legacy. When that game was getting previewed, I remember seeing a trailer that was done really well and getting extremely excited. And then there was another gameplay preview 
after that that looked absolutely atrocious to me. And I went, oh, no, this game's going to suck. And I kind of feel like that's the same path that we took with Star Wars Outlaws leading up to its release. Did you feel the same way? Am I crazy in that? I know like you've been pretty hyped for this, but did you get that up and down roller coaster kind of leading up to this? I, I think I did because um, I, I, I'm sure a lot of people know I'm easily excitable. A good trailer with killer music can sell me on anything. I'm uh, definitely a big one on FOMO, so I never want to miss out on fun that could be have or had. And uh, this one, I, I would watch a trailer or watch gameplay and I'd, think this this looks amazing this looks awesome i'm beyond excited to play and then i'd see something else and i'd say whoa that kind of looks weird or oh this this you know traveling through the world looks pretty sparse you know how dense is this game gonna actually be how much detail will there be so it was definitely one of those up and down we're not sure how to respond how to react to what we're seeing uh but i'm excited we're gonna finally find out yeah, I I have been very up and down on this game to be honest. So much so that when it, you know, when like you mentioned, you know, August and September Star Wars Outlaws was like we were going to play it on release day. Yeah. I remember us saying like, "Hey, the day this game is released, we're going to dive into it." And then Astrobot came out, and then Space Marine 2 came out, and then didn't this release? I can't remember if this released right before or after Black Myth Wukong. I think it released 10 days after Black Myth Wukong. I think, yeah, it was just right yeah. after, yeah. And so that's kind of a little bit of what happened is I went, I don't know what to think anymore, man. I'm not sure this game is like at the top of my hype meter. And so we did push it off a little bit. Now, Dissertory played this game, and he has made no secret that he absolutely loves this game. He thinks it is drastically underrated by gamers. He thinks that a lot of like the critic reviews and stuff are crazy. And so when he heard that we weren't going to cover this game right away, he jumped in and he said, dude, you guys have got to play this game, man. Like, I think you're going to absolutely love this game. And if it got pushed to the wayside with all these other releases... Then I'm I'm you know I'm pulling out an Emperor Palpatine yeah. and I'm gonna lay down the law and I'm gonna say you guys gotta play this since he has that power. He you did know? say and you we guys went, literally you guys gotta play this game. We're like okay yes yeah. yes sir <laughs> and so that's you know I mean that's where we're at with this. Um, you know I want to touch on some of the review controversy and some of the that kind of stuff as far as like critics responses versus gamer responses and stuff like that. But we're gonna take a short break. Uh, and we'll be right back and then we'll get into that. When you need mealtime inspiration, it's worth shopping Kroger for thousands of appetizing ingredients that inspire countless mouth-watering meals. And no matter what tasty choice you make, you'll enjoy our everyday low prices, plus extra ways to save, like digital coupons worth over $600 each week and up to $1 off per gallon at the pump with points. So you can get big flavors and big savings. Kroger, fresh for everyone. Fuel restrictions apply. If you're an athlete, you know the greatest motivator of all is the fear of letting your teammates down. After all, a team is only as good as its weakest link. So you owe it to those wearing the same jersey as you to be your best every time you step on the field. That's why there's no vape in team. When you vape, you can expose your lungs to toxic chemicals that can damage your lungs. If you're a step behind, the team's a step behind. Brought to you by The Real Cost and the FDA. All right, Ryan. So like I mentioned right before the break, this game has been very polarizing. Um, you know, when it got to the release and the review embargo was up, we started to see some of these reviews come out and the critics were not very kind to this game for what looked like it was going to be a very well done game. Yeah. You know, and so the critic reviews from a lot of the, you know, the the more well-known gaming websites started to release and we kind of went, oh, no, you know, yeah. and we're <laughs> gamers, dude. We, we like I said, we say this all the time. We are not experts. We don't pretend to be experts. We're not professional game reviewers and stuff like that. So we are susceptible to like all other gamers out there to reviews and what people are saying about them. Yeah, you know, 100%. and so when this started to happen, I know we all kind of went like, oh, no, oh, no, yeah. <laughs> like, is this game? Is it is it not good? <laughs> yeah, well, it's the, and go ahead. I was just going to say I was actually going to ask you, like, did that throw you off? 
Um, it's it's hard for me because a lot of times I don't tend to go with the critic reviews on a lot of stuff. So uh, some of my favorite movies were reviewed harshly uh, critically. You know, <laughs> Armageddon. <there's, yeah. laughs> um, so uh, it's just it's at the end of the day. Is it fun and did you enjoy yourself? And that's that's what's going to matter to me. And so if it's a world that I love, a world that is done well enough for me to feel like I'm a part of it and to connect with it, that's what matters. So what we've seen, you know, there's a really, really harsh reviews critically, but I think a lot of the user reviews were pretty dang positive and that's what matters. That's from Star Wars fans and people that want to be in this world and want to be in this environment and, and enjoy it. And if it hits with them, more than likely it's going to hit with me. So, um, yeah, I'm, I'm excited to see what, what we're going to kind of make of it and what our, uh, opinions will be after the fact, which, which side we agree with more. But I tend to feel like I think, you know, they got enough money and enough backing behind this to make a decent game. Yeah. I, I will say that reviews, I try not to put too much stock into them, especially from some of like the bigger gaming websites. You know, um, I just, they're not indicative of like what gamers are really in touch with a lot of times. I go much more by like personal experience. You know, when Dissertory started to say, hey, this game is fantastic, that I, I start to kind of perk up, you know, and you know, I will say that this game was review bombed. We're not going to get into any of that controversy because honestly, it's all stupid and we just want to play video games and have fun. But, you know, somebody that might go to Metacritic and look at the scores is going to go, wait a minute, what do you mean? But again, this game was review bombed for a bunch of dumb reasons and we're not going to get into that. Um, I, what I want to do is I actually want to just read a, a couple. These are just the snippets. These are not full reviews from the gaming websites, um, but just to give people an idea. So GameSpot gave this game a 6 out of 10 and said that it missed the mark. And the little snippet says, Outlaws does too much of what it does poorly and too little of what it does well. So okay. It's like, okay, 6 okay. out of 10 is not very good. Yeah. <laughs> PC Gamer gave it a 73 out of 100 and said, Ubisoft's open world Star Wars adventure succeeds at the little things, but not much else shines. Eurogamer gave it 2 out of 5 stars. Ooh. And said Massive, which is the developer, bravely peels away the many layers of Ubisoft open world isms in Star Wars Outlaws, but it's a fatal error. Man, Oof, two out of that five. That's that's <laughs> I, how you got to have a bad game to get a two out of five, though. I like, that's honestly that's very true. But OK, so here's a couple uh, quick user reviews. So these are from people that have played the game. This first one's Mandel 47 gave it a nine out of 10 says great open world feels alive. It's not overly bloated. Uh, as some open world games are. My favorite Star Wars game in many years. Minor bugs encountered, but nothing major for a game of this size and scope. Don't look at the birds. Right? <laughs> Don't look at the birds. Poor Paul. <laughs> All right. Uh, Mad Art 98 gave it a 9 out of 10. Says, I was hesitant to buy this game at first because of all of the negativity online, but I'm glad I went with my gut and purchased the game anyway. I'm happy to say I'm so glad that I did. Awesome. Okay. Okay. So there you go. Somebody that was reading all this stuff and then said, you know what? I'm going to give it a shot anyway. Goody gave it an eight out of 10 and said, this game is clearly getting review bombed by people who have never played the game. I'm now in it for about 10 hours and I really enjoy it. The story is fine, has some nice twists. The visuals are gorgeous and the gameplay is familiar, but fine. Okay. So yeah, seems to be, and again, you know, the, yes, there's a lot of like, you know, negative reviews from people and you're always going to get that mix. But the general feeling overall is that gamers seem to enjoy this game and critics kind of hammered it. So as we go into it, like, how does that make you feel? I guess, like, does it make you hesitant about the game itself, knowing that a lot of the critics in the gaming websites have kind of slammed it or does the gamer side of things kind of override that and get you hyped for it? I think I I'm going to trust a gamer over, over the critics because critics are influenced. They are uh, beholden to their bosses and, and big game, if you will, you know, that, yep. that, that pays the bills. <laughs> um, and, and one thing that really, really kind of hit in my ears and triggered um, excitement for this game was when uh Dissertory told me, Think Uncharted Four, but Star Wars. Ugh. And I said, "Okay, dude." I know now, how much you love Uncharted yeah, Four. Now you're speaking my language. Like if you, if I have that type of playability with this open world, 
good quality graphics, good uh, uh, environment that meshes well with everything, but it's Star Wars. Like that's that's what I'm looking for. And if it's even anything close to that, I'm gonna have a good time, and I will I will enjoy myself. Maybe it's not the best Star Wars ever. Maybe it's not you know the best game I've played this year, but I will thoroughly enjoy myself. It's if, if that's what I'm getting. Right. Yeah. I, I, I've never played Uncharted 4, but I know how much you love it and how much people generally love it. And so when he said that, I kind of perked up as well. And yeah. I'm like, whoa, like, OK, like I, I now I'm kind of <laughs> a lot more interested than I was already. Um, one of our favorite pastimes on this podcast is to pick on Ubisoft. Uh, listen, Ubisoft, we love some of Ubisoft's games. The reason we pick on them is because I don't know that there's another company apart from like the evil blizzard and evil EA that we have seen kind of lose their way on like forgetting how to make a good video game. You know, it's like they found a formula and they just ground it into the dust until finally gamers started to revolt. And then they went, what? You know, (laughs) and like they can't even figure out why people are not thrilled with Ubisoft right now. Um, But this is an Ubisoft published game. And I know that that brings up a little bit of hesitancy with us, or at least myself, because they don't have a great track record lately. They do not. And we have seen some news stories with them saying, hey, this game did not perform as well as they were hoping it would. It doesn't have the number of sales that they were hoping it would and stuff like that. So does this being Ubisoft and hearing those, hey, the sales haven't been great, does that affect your opinion going into this game? That that's a hard one because we we know how all of us feel about Ubisoft here. Um, it's just one of those things where, like you said, they they kind of forgot where they came from and they lost their way, and that's what happens with these companies of all types. You know, and not just in the gaming industry, but the bigger you get, the more for whatever reason you you lose your way and you you lose track of what got you there. You know, you're not worried about creating just a beautiful awesome game you're worried about you know dollars and cents and how it looks to investors and all that stuff so i i did have a little bit of a drawback because it is ubisoft but i think from what i've heard from everybody else and what i've heard from other people and and see now that it has been out for a little bit and we kind of get some quality reviews on on people who've actually played the game I, i am still excited but you know it is ubisoft brother yeah, I, I'm not going to lie. It does bring a little bit of hesitancy yeah. to me because I Which just is fair. don't trust it's totally their track fair. record. I mean, it, yeah. it really, it, they don't have the best track record lately. I know that they have kind of, they touted this game as being, you know, a much more crafted experience and it's not bloated with, you know, 500 towers to climb and unveil areas of the map. And they, they were very careful to say, we've crafted this experience and we feel like this is back to what gamers want, which is great. But I just don't know if it's PR speak, yeah. you know, at that point, right? Kind of well, like Battlefield 2042. I was just going to you know, say love that love letter, letter <laughs> dude. I was, I swear I was going to say the love letter. <laughs> I want to rip that letter up and burn it. <laughs> oh, man. So I, so I, but that brings up the point that as gamers, we have gotten to where we start to just ignore these claims that developers make at that yeah. point, you know? And so I will say I am hesitant going into this game. It doesn't mean that I'm I've got a closed mind by any means because I love Star Wars, dude. Yeah. I love Star Wars games. Yeah. You know, I mean, you can have a mediocre Star Wars game and chances are I'm probably still going to love it just cuz I freaking <laughs> love Star it's Wars. It's just Star Wars, yep. You know. And so I mean, let's talk about that, right? Like Star Wars games. We've had some banger Star Wars games oh. in the past. I mean, let's go way back when to the Knights of the Old Republic series. KOTOR, you know, baby. The Force Unleashed, you know, um, Squadrons, which I was very hyped for. That one fell a little short, but it was still an absolute blast for a while. Yep. And then more recently, we've had Jedi Fallen Order, which you and I both absolutely love. Uh-huh. And then we also had Jedi Survivor, which I think had some issues on release and is still a very good video game. Probably was a little harsh on that game at release, but that was more so that it had some technical issues and a few design choices that I felt were a little lazy. But overall, that's still a great Star Wars game oh, as well. Absolutely. And it's it's hard when you follow up a game so good as Fallen Order you know, with that, it's, it's hard. It's, you know, that's why the sequels, it's always so hard to make a sequel like that actually, you know, is coming from something that does so well prior, but, um, yeah, it was still a solid game quality. I'm sure a lot of the bugs got fixed. So I definitely would still recommend it. Yeah. So 
let me ask you, do you think that Star Wars Outlaws is going to have the ability to stack up to some of those games? Like, do you think it might fall in the mix? This is the issue with it having come out a little bit ago, and we already kind of um, have It's hard somewhat, to not be influenced yeah, right, by influenced the reviews on and that. by some of the chatter and Ex- stuff like that. Exactly, because I feel like if it really was that next level, that next generation Star Wars game, we probably would have already known that, and, and we right. would have heard about it. That's not to say that it's not going to be amazing. That's not going to say we're not going to have a member- memorable experience that we will remember 20 years from now of playing this game. So don't want to take anything away from it. However, I don't know if it's going to be that transcendent type game, but maybe it's a stepping stone to that type of open world, awesome Star Wars experience that obviously everybody wants. Yeah, and you know, it should be said that not every game is going to be a 10 out of 10 or a 9 out of 10, yeah. and that's okay. Yeah. Like, honestly, that's okay. I mean, this game is available on Ubisoft Plus, so you can pick it up and play it for a month for, I think it was $17, which I know is what both you and I did. So if you can save a little bit of cash and still experience the game, I mean, that kind of makes sense as well. So I'm going to say I don't think it's going to fall into that upper echelon of these like best of the best Star Wars games, but if it gets close... Like, yeah. honestly, if it gets even remotely close for me, I, that's a win in my opinion. For sure. You know, I agree. If yeah. I, like I said, if I get a, a mid-tier, an okay-ish Star Wars game, it's going to elevate it a little bit higher for me just by nature of being Star Wars. And one of the things that I keep hearing from people is that the world and the environment and the feel of this game is very much Star Wars. So yeah. take the gameplay aside and some of the issues that people complain about, but almost universally people say it feels like Star Wars. And, and that's, that gets me excited. Exactly. And what more can you ask for from, you know, a Star Wars game? And and I'm I'm big on that. I love in all the Tomb Raiders, Uncharted, um, I talked about it in Space Marine. I love environments, worlds, depth to the world. I love to just stop and look around at things, kind of smell the roses, if you will. So if it offers me that experience to where I genuinely feel like I'm in that Star Wars environment and and it's even just a mediocre game, I will, I will be more than satisfied, especially like we said, if you sign up for Ubisoft Plus or whatever, 17, 18 bucks, and then cancel after a month, you know, no harm, no foul. So yeah, it's, yeah. I think it's a good deal. All right, Ryan, we're getting close to the end of this episode. We got to kind of wrap things up, but I, I always like this question going into it, but what's your biggest concern? Like going into this game, like what, what could ruin it or make it like, Ooh, man, I kind of get those bad reviews. <laughs> yeah. The, the one thing that would make it hard for me and, um, not to disparage this game. I love the game, but it's going to be an example is like with red faction, that we played on that uh, hijack a host. Yeah, the 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 scarcity in the world in between, you know, the dense population. If if this, I know this was a concern watching the reviews and gameplay and stuff. If if those areas are that sparse and you have teeny little pockets, and then you got to drive through this desolate wasteland, that kind of is a little bit of a turnoff for me. That may just be a personal thing. It may not, you know, I haven't read read, read a ton of reviews, but um. If, if that's something that's kind of prevalent in the game, it might make me feel a little bit different than I normally would uh, for a game why, of this Why type. have an open world if yeah, there's nothing Why, why it, have right? it there if you're, I'm going to have to drive for three minutes to go through? And and everyone will say, well, what about Red Dead? Why don't you go through Red Dead? Okay, things can always happen in Red Dead. There's always a million different spots to pull off and do stuff. If it yeah. if it's like that, oh, I'm all for it. I'm game on, baby. But um, if it's just that kind of scarce wasteland in between without a purpose other than just kind of being there. That's, that's the one thing that um, I would be concerned about. Yeah. For me, I think um, if the game is shallow, um, like, so for instance, we know that there's shooting in this game. We know there's stealth in this game. We know from trailers that you get a spaceship and there's, you know, space combat in this game, which I mean, really gets me excited. (laughs) I'm excited. Yeah. (laughs) And so it's like, you can have these six or seven different systems, which is great. But if they're all just very, very mid, it's kind of hard to go like, okay, I'm glad that you had it, but it's just so shallow. Like it doesn't really, it doesn't bring anything to me. Like if the shooting is just abysmal in this game or the stealth is just annoying and it doesn't serve a purpose in the game itself, that's that's my concern. So it's kind of like, I like what I see, 
but you just never know until you actually get into the gameplay and you start playing the game that does this stuff make a difference, you know? Yeah. And I've always said, I don't like pure stealth games, but I do really enjoy stealth, like, aspects of a game. And I know that this game has it. So, like, I'm curious about that. Is the space combat, is it fun? Or is it just so bland and blah that it's like, yeah, it's there, but it just didn't do anything for me. So I think that's my biggest concern is just, is everything very shallow in the gameplay to where none of it excites me, I guess. Yeah, I'd rather have, you know, three sections to a game that are really thought out, put in well, and and developed properly than 10 that are just kind of meh, but they're there. I'll look at all the options you can have and what you can do, you know, but there's really not, like you said, it's shallow. There's no depth to it. So yeah, I'm totally with you on that. All right, Ryan, Uh, we kind of touched on this, so I think I might know your answer, but do you think that there's any chance that this is nominated for Game of the Year? I I don't think it will be. I think that it may be in the running. You know, maybe some of the stuff kind of comes out, they hash out any of the issues. It's very probably low chance that it does happen, but I do not think that it'll be Game of the Year. My Game of the Year is still Astrobot. Yeah, I'm kind of with you. You said it earlier. I if it was if it was a game of the year material, I think we would We'd have know. heard right. You yeah, know, I think you'd be hearing a lot more, uh, you know, kind of fanfare about this game. It is very possible, and again, I'll, I'll point this out because Dissertory brought this up: is that with some of the negative reviews and the critics' reception to this that it's very possible that it's just flying under the radar. Like yeah. people just kind of read those reviews and went, eh, and then, it, and he has been shouting saying, no, this guys, game it's good, is I swear. awesome, man. <laughs> yeah. Like, what are you guys doing? This game is really good. Like, give it a chance, you know? And as gamers, I think when we see that, that, that is something that we should do. Yeah. You know, I've been doing that with Remnant 2 for ages now because I think it's one of the best games I've ever played, yeah. you know? And so it's like, that's my job, right? Is to say like, dude, Give this a chance. It's really, it's it's good, man. And I'm trying to tell people that. Don't believe everything you read on the internet. So, um, all right, Ryan, one last thing, and then we got to get out of here. Let's just, let's have a little fun. Oh, I want you to predict what your rating of this game is going to be after we come back and we do the deep dive so that we can compare it when we actually have played the game and we rate it then, I kind of want to see like how those compare. So, you know, for, for where do you think it's going to land on your leaderboard? Based on what I've seen, not from like looking just kind of general hearsay and talking to people and what Disratory said and then uh, seeing things online, I think it's going to be a quality game. I think I will enjoy it. And if it's anything like Uncharted 4 with Star Wars, I'm going to love it. But kind of tempered mild expectations i think i'll be in the eights probably eight three to eight five Some, okay. somewhere around there like it's a, it's a good solid fun game not top tier not one of the best star wars but but something that everyone should probably check out i'm gonna say i think i'm Star Wars helps me a lot. Oh yeah, and me too. <laughs> hearing hearing some gamers talk about the game in a very favorable light, not just Disratory, we've heard it from, you know, quite a few people. Um, I'm going to say I think it's going to be an 8, just an 80 for me. Okay. Um, you know, that kind of like you said, I think that this is going to be an enjoyable game that maybe I'm not going to, you know, talk about 2 years from now and be like, "Oh, you know, hey, remember Star Wars Outlaws," but I do think it's going to be enjoyable. I think uh, it's I I my hope is that it's going to be better than what I think people are giving it credit for, and so I'm going to guess 8.0 on the dot. And like you said, we are heavily influenced that it's Star Wars. We both love yeah. it, and we are not ashamed. Like I know you talked about your thing. I don't know if I've ever showed you this, buddy, but the, I know the listeners can't hear it. But I oh, genuinely the, the have I have the schematics for Tie Fighters for, and A Wings yep. and Y Wings and the Millennium Falcon. I have the, the schematics that's for a all the ships, even, man. Yeah. Heck yeah. Yeah, yeah. So uh, we we are big Star Wars fans, even though I didn't know it, it was uh, twelve parsecs. Excuse me. Yeah, that's okay. <laughs> that's it's forgivable. Yeah. So. <laughs> All right. Well, listen, that is the end of this episode. We have kind of given all of our thoughts, our concerns, our excitement levels. I mean, if, if at this point, people kind of know how we feel going into this. We are going to play this game for the next two weeks. Um, you know, we always like to be able to give ourselves enough time to experience it and, you know, be able to actually talk about it as well. 
Um, so join us in two weeks time uh, and then you'll get to hear all of our thoughts we'll find out if this game is actually better than a lot of people are giving it credit for we'll also give away I was just gonna say I was gonna jump in join the discord we will announce a winner on the episode in two weeks if you're in the discord we're gonna pick somebody from our discord group and uh, you gotta respond to us and uh, let us know that you are a a real person and not a bot or something like that but um, hop in there uh, it, e- anyway, even not if the ge- the game giveaway, it's an awesome community. We we love everybody that comes and joins in. But we will be announcing a game uh, winner in two weeks, and uh, you just got to be in the Discord. Awesome. All right. Well, that wraps up this episode. Please remember, if you enjoyed the episode and you want more like it, make sure you follow and subscribe to us in your podcast app. That way you get all of our episodes right away on the day that they release. We do release episodes every Monday and Thursday, so twice a week for you there. Um, If you want to go further and help support the show, just like Disratory did, or any of our other numerous people that really help support this podcast, you can do that over at MultiplayerSquad.com. And also, just as a reminder, telling a friend, you know, just pointing people towards the podcast, letting them know about it is a huge help as well. Um, you know, if you do support the show over on MultiplayerSquad.com, you'll get a shout out. You get our heartfelt thanks, some cool Discord perks, early access, ad freeze. I mean, we try to we try to make it worth your while and say thank you uh, for going that extra mile for us. Also, make sure you follow us on socials at Video Gamers Pod, and like we have been touting this entire episode. There is a link to our Discord server in the episode description. You know, it is free to join. We just love having a good gaming community. Uh, We get nothing out of that other than the satisfaction of just meeting and getting to chat with a lot of awesome gamers out there. Um, That Discord server is also family friendly, so you don't have to worry if your kids want to join it or anything like that as well. So I think that's it. I'm excited to dive in, Ryan. I know you got a big old grin on your face. (laughs) I know you're excited to dive in. So join us in two weeks for the follow-up to this episode. But also, we will be back in just a couple days with another episode as well. So until next time, happy gaming. Josh, I love you. I love you too. No, come on. (laughs) I know. I know know. the answer. (laughs) Dang it. Oh, it was right there. I just well, thought you were being really nice, well, man. Yep. Well, see ya. <laughs> He's my she's my sister. <laughs> see ya, everybody. Bye. <laughs>